welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVentures, welcome back. If you're new to this Astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the Astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies, combined with the less lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventure. Now today, I wanted to talk to you about the upcoming Peekaboo Comet, and uh, common name C2023A3, and I'm only gonna try this once, Chushinshin, Atlas Comet. From here on out, I'll just refer to it as T Atlas because I don't want to uh, butcher that name or uh, anybody to think that I'm I'm disrespecting the uh, the Chinese observatory that initially spotted this. And I, so I apologize. Don't want to butcher it any further. But let's take a look here. Now I'm in northern uh, Utah, and you can see down here this latitude longitude. I'm in uh, northern Utah, and I'm hearing a lot of hype about this comet. And one of the things that I'm hearing is is they're talking about the um, the incredible magnitude that it's supposed to uh, it's supposed to get super super bright, possibly hitting the negatives. And just for reference, a magnitude of four is naked eye visible in dark good conditions okay and then as the number gets lower the brighter it is okay for example our sun is a negative 24 okay now the magnitude that is shown in stellarium is way off from what is being predicted and there's a lot of uh, really grandiose predictions going on as to how bright this is supposed to be and you know brighter than comet neo wise but not as bright as hale bop and you know and it seems to be all over the place and i'm really worried that one this is being drastically overhyped first um as i said to me it's the peekaboo comet so here we are we're um uh, starting at september 27th now the reason i started there September 26th, it's still climbing, and I'm trying to find a happy medium in time. You'll see the time, uh, 0625 over here, and I'm trying to find a happy medium in time of when the Peekaboo Comet decides to come up, show itself, but before there's too much light coming from the sun. And so I'm thinking and looking at this, on the 26th, it's still a little bit lower, the 27th, comes a little bit higher. It's gonna be sitting at an altitude of three degrees above the horizon. Um, you have to have an incredibly um, clean horizon line to, to even be able to get line of sight to this. So on the 27th, it hits that three degrees above. The 28th, it's going to do the same. And the time I was going with was the 625. Now, sure, you could start to move this, and I'm going to slide this over a little bit. You can start to move this time, but as you do, and you can see, we're getting brighter. And so the brighter it gets, the more this is going to fade, and it's going to be difficult. The other thing is, is that on this um, comment on T-Atlas, the prediction is, is, again, there's some grandiose predictions. Uh, one of them is, is that the tail on this has the potential to be up to 40 full moons in length. So 40 full moons side by side. That's, that's going to be a huge tail if it materializes. And here's the thing. As this comet plays peekaboo with us, and being at only 3 degrees, you may only see the tail coming up. You may not even be able to get to this. I personally doing my own homework, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, but my own homework, um, I'm just not seeing September as really being viable unless, I mean, these uh, grandiose comet predictions as to how you know intense the, uh, the lighting of the tail will be actually come true because it's going to need to be, I mean, you look at it, there's 727. 
we're way up here with the comet. But I mean, you got the sun blazing through. And so, you know, I, I just don't see how this is going to end up being really that visible for us and why, you know, we're going to have to compromise on time and date. So, honestly, I just don't think it's going to happen for us in September. So, when do I think we might get an opportunity? Now, I sat here and did, again, lots of homework. Here in September, this peekaboo comet, T Atlas, is going to be in the eastern sky, and it'll be just before, you know, full sunrise comes up. But, swinging this around, zoom this out, swinging it around to the western sky, and let's adjust this now. And let's move forward into October 13th. I should learn to type better. October 13th. And then we need to go to the night. And I'm going to 1920 for hours. 1920. Sorry, all of us Americans. We don't typically use a 24-hour clock. But uh, anyway, here we go. 1920 on October 13th. You could see, here's where the comet is. It is sitting at an altitude of 13 degrees above the horizon, and it's chasing the sun down. This will be the start of when you might start looking for it. I'm not optimistic here at this point, uh, because again, it's competing with the sun, and as the night goes and it gets a little darker, but we're getting low on the horizon. I mean, right here at you know 19, you know 39, we're looking pretty good. But our altitude is sitting at only 10 degrees above the horizon. So, again, uh, knowing these facts, you might start checking now. Go out and take your equipment, uh, find a target that's sitting at that 10 degrees, and see if that's an even you know workable thing for you. Okay. So, 13th, not looking good. I'm going to set this at 1925. That's my uh, working time to get started. So, nighttime, actual full dark, doesn't come till 2020 on the night of the 13th. And I'm going to work with a time of 1925 here. Okay. So, let's move forward to the 14th. On the 14th, uh, at 1925, we're looking at, again, our altitude sitting at 16 degrees, so we're very low. We're competing with the sun. I'm just not seeing it, um, you know, as in I just don't expect it to work for us yet. The 15th, now the other thing is that we're competing with is that the um, comet is well past its perihelion or its closest point to the sun. So it's actually getting further away from us, but it is getting higher in altitude. And with our equipment and being able to shoot long exposures, even though it is getting away from us, I think with our long exposures, we can really kind of capture it and bring it back. But anyway, on October 15th, looking at a time of 1925, uh, dark doesn't actually happen until 2017 on this night. Again, this is my northern Utah, and you can find your own times at timeanddate.com. But it looks like we're finally getting up into some altitude. We're up here at 19 degrees. Uh, I think a lot of people find this to be the start of where they can actually get a line of sight on the horizon. But again, still not ideal. We've got quite a bit of sun going. Uh, the 16th, we're climbing higher. And at this point here, I'm going to move this a little bit. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this to about, let's say, 1944. So October 16th, 1944 for time. And we've got the comet, T Atlas, sitting here at 19 degrees above the horizon probably doable for a lot of people you'll notice it's gotten a whole lot darker this might be i'm really feeling like october 16th is that point where we might finally be able to you know have some somewhat ideal skies and um you know with our long exposure i think this is really the point that we're looking for where things are going to come together for us. So 
There you go, October 16th, 1944. That's what I'm suspecting. Now, the challenge that we are looking at. Uh, directly across from where we're shooting here, the moon, which is darn near full, it's going to be a 98%, is coming up at 708. Uh, or excuse me, 1908. Uh, 708 for Americans, 1908 for everybody else. So it's going to be on the opposite side, but it is going to start kicking light into the atmosphere. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue for us. But I believe October 16th, this is going to be our night. That's where I think we can start chasing it. Now, from here, it's going to get both better and worse. Better in the fact that each night as we go, there's the 17th. Uh, I'm going to move my time to 1948. Notice I'm pulling it down a little bit, but I'm getting closer to dark, which is at 2014. And again, my altitude's sitting at 21 degrees above. So we have improved a little bit there. So again, this will work. So I said that's improving. The part that's not is it is pulling away from us. But with our long exposure, I think we can really do something. And then as we go through the month, okay, I'm looking at, uh, let's see here. So October 17th, there's the 18th. And you'll notice it's getting quite a bit higher. Uh, night is at 2012. There we go on the night of the 19th. Uh, 2011 for total dark. But... The dark that we've got at 1948, this is going to be completely doable and usable. And so each night you can see as we go through, it's getting higher in the sky. And here we are on the 23rd, uh, 2006, that's dark. That's absolute total dark. So, I mean, it, it just gets better other than, like I said, the angle and the fact that it's pulling away from us. So my suggestion... Um, Sure, give it a go in the end of September. If it does have the grandiose flare-up that, that's being predicted by some, I have a feeling you're only going to catch the, the tail end of the comet uh, for a lot of you. And then, uh, you know, it's only really two days in September before it starts to dive back down as it plays peekaboo between us and the Southern Hemisphere. Then in October, like I said, October 13th would be the point that I start watching it. And then I think October 16th will actually be something doable for us. And then from there, you know, I know for myself, I'll pursue this thing all the way through to the end of, Oct uh, end of October as I uh, just kind of, you know, evaluate what it's doing. Because at some point, the angles aren't going to work, the distance, the, the, the loss. I mean, it's going to start to fade. So I really think October 16th, I will start to work it until it gets to the point where it's now diminishing. So there you have it, everybody. Um, you know, we've got some other videos on how to shoot comets, but I just wanted to give you some information on this particular one because there is a whole lot of grandiose claims that are going on, and I really think a lot of people are going to be uh, quite disappointed as to what we have uh, in part because of the peekaboo of the comet when it's closer to its perihelion and then when it's actually ideally in the sky for us or starting to be ideal here in the northern hemisphere it is pulling away from us so we'll see what we get i would love to see you over at our facebook group astro venture dslr and uh, if you do capture the comet please get on there share your images tell us the story and uh you know what you were shooting and your settings and all that good stuff so i'd love to hear it so until next time uh you know Wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.